For example, let's say we're given something like this. So in each of these months from January to August, we're told how many cars are produced in the factory during that month and what the total cost per month is. Now I want you to sort of forget about these months for now. I'm going to come back to this at the end of the questions. I'm going to show you how to convert, for example, an equation, a monthly equation to an annual equation because sometimes you'll be asked for that. But for now, I just want you to focus on these columns here. So basically we're given the output and we're given the total cost for that respective output. And what we want to do with this data is try to get the most accurate equation. So if you remember, we had the equation y equals mx plus b. I'm just going to put c instead of y to represent the cost. Right? The m value is the variable cost per unit. And then that b value, the y-intercept, is basically the fixed cost that you're going to have to pay. So we want to try to take this and make an accurate or an as accurate equation as we can. And to do that, I'm going to go over three methods. So in the next three examples, I'm going to show you how we could take data like this and use three different methods to get this equation over here. And the first method that I want to go over is the high-low method. And to describe the high-low method, what I actually want to do is a review of some high school math. So let's say that we're given two points on a line. So let's say 2 and 17. And let's say 5 and 26. And what we have to do is we have to take these two points on the line and make an equation, y equals mx plus b. So the first step is you want to find the slope. And the slope, if you remember, it's equal to rise over run. And it's basically the difference in the y values over the difference in the x values. So we can actually label these points. This point I'm going to label x1, y1, and then this point x2, y2. So always make sure whenever you have an x1, you've got a y1 there. If you have an x2, it has to be a y2 there. So it doesn't really matter which ones you label, you're still going to get the same slope. Just make sure it's all properly in line. So we just plug it into this equation. So y2 minus y1, so 26 minus 17, all over x2, 5 minus x1, 5 minus 2. And so when you do that, 26 minus 17, that will give you 9. 5 minus 2, that will give you 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3. So we know the slope of this line is equal to 3. So we have y equals 3x plus b now, but we have to find out what that b value is. And how do we do that? Well, we could just take either one of these points, doesn't matter which one, and plug it in for x and y and then solve for b. So I'm going to take the 2 and 17. So if I plug in 17 here, I got 3 times 2 plus b. So this would be 17 equals 6 plus b. And then uh, bring the 6 over to isolate for the b. 17 minus 6, that gives us 11. And so the b value is 11. And now we have the equation of the line. We got 3x plus that b value of 11. So that's how you take two points and get the equation of a line. And I wanted to do this review because that's the exact same process we're going to use when using the high-low method to get an equation from this data here. Now, one more point I want to make. I could have also used 5 and 26 here to solve for that b value. I still would have got 11. So if I plugged in 5 here and I had 26, we'd have 26 equals 15 plus b. Bring the 15 over, 26 minus 15 it would give us 11. So it doesn't really matter which point you plug in over here to solve for that B value. Okay, so knowing that now, the high-low method is, uh, is pretty easy because with the high-low method, what you have to do is you have to look at the data and you have to look for the highest output and the lowest output. So let's start off with the lowest output. The output is this column here. Out of all of these numbers, which one is the lowest? Well, the 325. So we would write the 325 as the x value and then the respective cost as the y value. That would be one of the points we use. So we got 6,450,000, right? So this is like x1, y1, if we're to compare it to the previous example. And then we have to get a point for the highest output. 
So out of all of these, which one is the highest output? The highest output is this 910 over here. So we would write 910 and then the respective cost for 910, 15,225,000. So this is like X2, Y2. Now, a couple points I wanna make here. The X values is always going to be the output. It's always gonna be the number of units. In this case, it's number of cars, but the number of units can be anything, anything that's being produced right? In this case, it's cars. And then the Y value, it's always going to represent the respective cost, the total cost for that output. And that cost is going to be a mix of fixed cost and variable cost. Another thing I want to mention is this high low always corresponds to the output, not the cost. Notice how we didn't take the, um, the highest cost or the lowest cost. For example, the lowest cost would be this 3 million. But we didn't look at that because it wasn't the lowest output. When they're talking about the high low method, they're talking about the highest output and the lowest output. So you got to take the highest and lowest x values in the data. So we only looked at this column. We didn't take the highest and lowest figures for this column. Sometimes they will correspond. So for example, this 15 uh, million two hundred twenty-five thousand. That was the highest cost, but that was just coincidence that it uh, corresponded to the highest output. It does make sense that you would get the highest cost with the highest output, but that's not always going to happen. So when you're getting these two points with the high-low method, you're always getting the lowest x value and the highest x value, the lowest output and the highest output. And then once you have these two points. It's basically really easy. We just follow the exact same steps that I went over in the previous example. We find the slope first, doing rise over run y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Remember this slope here, this m value, is going to represent the variable cost per unit. Right? So we would take 15,225,000 minus 6,450,000 all over 910 minus 325. And when you do that calculation, you basically get 15,000 for the end value. Remember when you're doing this in your calculator, make sure you put brackets there. So the M value is gonna be 15,000. So I'm gonna erase all of this here. So that's the slope of this line between these two points, 15,000. So that's the variable cost per unit, right? That's how much money um, it costs to produce each car, $15,000 per car. Before we had 25,000 per car in our previous example, in this example it's 15,000 per car, and that's just the variable cost. So now we have C equals 15,000 X plus B. Right, where x is the number of cars, we now have to solve for this b value. And so what we could do is we could pick either point to plug in. So we would plug in the y value for the cost and then the x value, the output for the number of cars. So let's use this point here. 6,450,000 equals 15,000 times 325. This is going to be plus and when you multiply these two numbers, you would end up getting 4,875,000. And so we bring this over, so we'd have 6,450,000 minus 4,875,000. And so that B value is gonna be 1,575,000, right? And so using the high-low method with this data here, the equation, is basically uh, 15,000 X plus 1,575,000 like that, right? That represents the fixed cost. Now, a lot of times to get this B value or to get this fixed cost, textbooks will show a certain formula. They'll just basically rearrange this. So we got C equals MX plus B. And if we isolate for this B, we bring the MX over. Basically, B would equal C minus MX. So sometimes you'll see a formula like fixed cost 
equals total cost minus the variable cost times the output, right, or the number of units. But just memorizing these kind of formulas, I think it's, uh, I think it's a little overkill, right? I think it's just better to keep it simple. Basically got two points, you got to find the equation of a line, find the slope, find the B value, right? Just use basic high school math to do that, right? And so we get our slope, which is the variable cost per unit, and we have our fixed cost. Now, what I want to talk about, as I mentioned at the beginning of the question, is this column over here. Notice that this equation that we got, it's the monthly cost. Right, so we got 15,000x plus 1,575,000. Right, this is the average monthly cost using the high-low method because this data was monthly. Right? Number of cars produced in that month, that was the total cost in that month. So this here is the monthly cost, 15,000x plus 1,575,000 um, as the fixed cost. That was on a monthly basis. Now, what if you got this equation, like we did, and then there was another question and they asked you to estimate or make an equation for the annual cost. How would you do that? Well, if you think about it, the variable costs, whether you're looking at it on a monthly basis or an annual basis, the variable cost is gonna be the same, right? It's still gonna cost you $15,000 per car to produce. It's just this X value now is gonna be number of cars per year, right? While here, this was the number of cars produced per month in this equation. So that's what's changing, this X value, what it represents is changing. What about the fixed cost though? Well, if you think about it, this fixed cost here, it's on a monthly basis. Right, so this could be maybe like the, uh, let's just say it's the factory depreciation, right? Let's just say that that's the full fixed cost. There's obviously gonna be other fixed costs, but let's just say it's the factory depreciation. So the monthly depreciation is 1,575,000, but the annual depreciation, we have to actually take that and multiply it by 12. So that's what's tricky about converting sometimes a monthly equation to an annual equation. The variable cost doesn't change, right? The slope is still gonna be the same, but the fixed cost, you gotta multiply it by 12 or to whatever you're trying to get to. So for example, you might get a monthly equation and they may want a quarterly equation, right? So quarter over year is three months. So you'd multiply that fixed cost by three. Right, so just remember that when you're converting from monthly to annual, for example, the variable cost is always staying the same, but you gotta take that fixed cost and multiply it by whatever number of months to get to what you're looking at. In this case, you're looking at annual, so you gotta take that monthly fixed cost, multiply it by 12. And when you do that, you end up getting 18.9 million, 18 million, 900,000. And so that there is the equation for the annual cost. So I thought I would point that out because sometimes students get confused about why the variable cost doesn't change, but the fixed cost does. It's because the variable cost is always going to be the same no matter how, uh, what time period you're looking at. It's just what that X value is, is going to change, right? So that's how you convert from uh, monthly to annual. Um, and yeah, that's it for the high-low method. Basically you get two points and the two points you get the lowest outputs, you get the lowest X value, corresponding cost, you get the highest X value, corresponding cost, just find the equation between those two points. Now, before moving on to the second method to get that equation, I wanna go over some potential issues with using the high-low method. If you notice, we completely ignored all of the middle values. We just used 
this, and this. And notice we didn't even use any of the other data to come up with this equation. So that's one of the issues is that it um, ignores the middle values. Another issue you got to be careful is outliers. Like what if one of these points was an outlier? So for example, if we were to take data like this and we were to plot it, right? So let's say uh, we plot a bunch of points. That's actually going to be the next method, scatter plot method. We're going to be plotting points. And let's say that obviously the lowest output is this point. And let's say that we have another point for the highest output. And let's say that's like uh, over here, right? It's kind of like away from this data over here. Actually, you know what? Let's, uh, let's put it closer. Let's say it's like uh, over here. So that let's say that's the highest output just to make it more pronounced. So notice that these points, they're sort of going this way, right? That's the sort of general trend. But then for the highest output, we have this outlier. And so when we make this line between these two points, that's how the line is going to look like. But notice that this line here, it's not representative of that general trend of all of the other points. And it's because that point there was an outlier. You could also have an outlier for the lowest um, output that you're looking at. So maybe the highest point was within that data, but then this lowest output, maybe something happened in the factory and then the cost was crazy high for even a low output, right? So that was an outlier there. So then when you make the line, it looks like that. It actually has a negative slope, which wouldn't even make sense, right? So you gotta be careful when you're looking at these two points, these high and low points, the high output, low output points, whether they're outliers or not. Because if one of them are outliers, then the line you're gonna get is not gonna be representative of the general data.